Hello and welcome to the first part of the 24th installment of my Pokemon Generation 3 ROM hacking series. The focus of this tutorial is to learn all about the intricacies of overworld sprites and how to replace and add your own custom sprites. To do this, we'll be utilizing a tool called Overworld Manager by Kimonos. This video will be broken down into the following segments. How do I navigate Overworld Manager? How do I replace existing overworld sprites? And how do I add overworld sprites without replacing any original sprites? The first thing we have to know is what an overworld sprite even is. Shown on screen is the inside of a Pokemart. There are four NPCs in here, including the player, the cashier, a male shopper, and a female shopper. Each of these sprites are overworld sprites. We call them overworld sprites because they exist on the overworld instead of in a battle sequence or something like that. You should also note that overworld sprites change as they turn, walk around, run around, or do some kind of special action like surf. Every different orientation that an overworld sprite is capable of being in must be represented by its very own drawing of the sprite, which are called frames. This means that one overworld sprite actually consists of several different frames of the same sprite, just in different orientations. Open Overworld Manager. As a fair warning, this program was recently rewritten and isn't completely finished being developed, so in the future there may be a few more functions that I don't talk about in this video. It's a fantastic tool nonetheless. We can't do anything until we open a ROM, so let's go ahead and do that. If this is the first time you're opening your ROM, the program will quit responding to you for around 10 seconds. This is normal, and you shouldn't start clicking randomly on it during this time. It's repointing a lot of data for you. After it's finished loading, you'll be able to pull up a table of every overworld sprite that exists within the game. Clicking on a sprite will display it under the Sprite View label. Remember that every overworld sprite consists of multiple frames. You can see how many frames a sprite has next to the Frames label, and scroll through them using the box underneath the display. The player happens to have 20 different frames, some for the movements and some for other special actions. Note that the frames begin counting at 0, so saying that the player has 20 frames means you can scroll through frames 0 through 19. The next point you should be aware of is the sprite type. A single overworld sprite must have a consistent size throughout all of its frames. The sprite's type tells the program what dimensions the sprite is going to be. You can find a list of each of the different valid type values in Overworld Manager's readme.txt file. Note that some sprite dimensions are specific to certain games and some are universal across all Gen 3 games. In Fire Red, the default text color changes depending on what the gender of the NPC is that you're talking to. You can set this text color using the text color box under the palette info label. We're going to replace the male player's overworld sprite with a custom shaman sprite. In order for the insertion to work properly, you need to follow some guidelines. On screen, you can see all of shaman's individual frames lined up one after the other. We're going to be importing this frame sheet as type 2, which requires each frame to be exactly 32 by 32 pixels in size. My shaman has 18 frames. It's extremely important to know which frames to place where in your frame sheet. The zero width frame is treated as standing still, facing down. The first is treated as standing still, facing up. The second is treated as standing still, facing left. In order to display the standing still facing right frame, the game will just use a reflected version of the standing still facing left frame. Therefore, there is no standing still facing right frame used in any frame sheet. The third frame is treated as walking down, right foot forward. The fourth frame is treated as walking down, left foot forward. The fifth frame is treated as walking up, right foot forward. The sixth frame is treated as walking up, left foot forward. The seventh frame is treated as walking left, right foot forward. The eighth frame is treated as walking left, left foot forward. Frames 9 through 17 follow the same pattern as the ones we just went over, but they correspond to running instead of walking. A normal, non-trainer NPC would only have the 9 walking frames. If you're messing with a trainer NPC, you will need a tenth frame, which looks something like this, which is used when a trainer is ready to be rematched using the Versus Seeker. Emerald and Ruby do not have this additional frame. Since we're changing the protagonist sprite, we're going to need 18 frames. 0 through 8 are the standing and walking frames, and 9 through 17 are the running frames. There are two additional frames, frames 18 and 19, that I'll be cutting off for the sake of this tutorial. 
These additional two frames are used when the player uses the Versus Seeker. Emerald version and Ruby version do not have these additional two frames. If you watched my last tutorial titled Battle Sprite Replacement, I talked about how we usually need to index a sprite before being able to insert it into the game. Conveniently, Overworld Manager indexes our sprite for us, so none of that tedious work is required on our end. However, your sprite can only contain a maximum of 16 colors, just like with battle sprites. Overworld Manager will assign the transparency or background color to the color of the top left pixel in your image. In Shaman's case, the very top left pixel is blue. You want to make sure that this color is different than the other 15 colors used to draw your overworld sprite. Let's finally insert the new frame sheet. First, we need to change the dimensions and the number of frames that the protagonist has. Click the Resize button. Change the overworld type to match your sprite's dimensions, and change the number of frames to match your sprite's frame count, then click OK. Next, click Actions, Frame Sheet, Import Frame Sheet, then select your sprite. It will be loaded into the display if there were no errors. You can scroll through to make sure everything turned out OK. To save your changes, click File, Save ROM. It might take a few seconds to save, so be patient. Shown on screen is the result. The player's old overworld sprite has been successfully replaced with a cute little shaman. Or has it? There's actually something very wrong here, which we'll get to soon enough. We would be done at this point if we were total amateurs, but we're not, so we need to look deeper into how overworld sprites work in technical terms. It might not seem so, but there's actually a much more complicated dark side to overworld sprite editing, especially for Emerald and Ruby hackers. I'll do my best to explain everything to you, but not right now. I'm going to split this tutorial into two separate videos since there's literally mounds and mounds of technical jargon you need to understand before destroying your game. Before wrapping things up, I want to go over some other insertion options Overworld Manager offers. If you don't want to replace an already existing sprite, you can add an entirely new sprite anywhere within the table. To add a sprite to the very end of the table, click the Add button. Enter the new sprite's type, which corresponds to its dimensions, its number of frames, and how many of these new sprites you want to add. Click the OK button and these new sprites will be added for you. You can also add a new sprite between the two other sprites instead of at the end of the table by clicking Insert. The process is the same as before. You can click the Remove button to delete an entry from the table. Finally, if you're wanting to extract a frame sheet from a sprite that already exists, click Actions, Frames, Export Frame Sheet. This will give you a .png file in the exact same dimensions that was used to insert it. That's everything I plan to discuss in the first part of this tutorial. Hopefully you all learned something valuable from this, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask either over at Pokey Community or right here in my video's comment section. Thank you so much for being my audience, and I'll be back in the second part of the 24th installment of this series.